everybody video here for you today thought i'd do another one on arizona here i've had some messages from people asking me the places that i've covered in arizona I've done about five or six the casa grande ruins snake town lost city of phoenix and the ball courts that was seven months ago Utpaki ruins four months ago Kaze malpais two years ago four corners region i included at least one site from arizona in that one in the rock art and history of Gila Bend about three years ago. But today we're going to cover two more ancient sites in Phoenix. And by the way, in the last week I jumped over 90,000 subs, thanks to all my new subs. I had quite a few in the last week, I appreciate that. But today let's go down to Phoenix, Arizona. First, let's just take a brief peek at Pueblo Grande right down here. Here's a site down here. You notice a mound built up, and there are ruins you can go visit there is a museum down here there are canals ancient canals in phoenix and the end of this video the last 10 minutes is going to be a lecture on a site that was found beneath the streets of phoenix here but this place you can go and visit today these hohokam villages maybe go back maybe 1500 years at the most if you can get a good idea here on google earth the ruins here and then just north of this main mound complex you can really see a lot of things here just looking around but there is an ancient ball court right down here are these ancient ball courts built at these hohokam villages well these people were the northern branch of the people who lived in mexico or central america here's a look at that ball court down on street level not as big as some of the ones coming from mexico or mesoamerica but they certainly serve the same function Here's what it looks like on top of that main mound here. Some of the dwellings have been excavated here, but they got some signs here telling you what you're looking at. But this mound is built up, maybe it looks like maybe 30 feet high. Here's a look inside the museum. These might be all the habitational sites around the Salt River here. They have a timeline, looks like it started around 450 AD or 1500 years ago. And these sites were lived at for maybe four or five hundred years. Here is what they think this site here, Pueblo Grande, looked like maybe a thousand years ago. Here are some bowls and pottery found at the site here. Designs that you might find on Mayan pottery that is very reminiscent of that. There's a good look right there. Some more things found in the museum here. They talk about the home builders. It says suburbs once stretched north and east of the platform mound here are some more artifacts here some bowls some stone tools found here this is pueblo grande down here i don't think it's grande that is just the way i want to say it but pretty good preservation down here museum a lot of stuff you can go see but let's talk about another site that is on the other side of sky harbor airport this is just to the east and north of it but let's go just to the other side here talk about a site lost beneath the streets of Phoenix. Now we're gonna talk about La Villa right down here. This is gonna be about a 10 minute clip from a 45 minute lecture from Archaeology Southwest. They make their videos shareable, that's always cool. But this right down here was an ancient village about 1500, thousand years ago. They found a lot of stuff down here. Here is that lecture. I will leave all the links below. Hope you enjoy. Okay. Hi, I'm Mike Lindemann, um, and today I'd like to um, talk a little about a couple of excavations that we did at the site of La Villa. The site of La Villa is in uh, downtown Phoenix, and so it's uh, Jefferson Street on the north and Grant Street on the um, south, and then on the eastern boundary there's 15th Ave, and then uh, on the or on the western boundary is 15th Ave, and on the eastern boundary is 9th Ave. And um, what I really want to talk about are two sets of excavations that we did, and then how we were able through um, a little bit of luck and uh, fortuitous placement of um, streets that came in, well, at least, um, at least uh, almost a thousand years after the site was established. But those streets gave us a real insight into the structure of the site. But first, I'd like to talk about 
why people settled at La Villa. And it's more or less the same reason, the same reasons that attracted early settlers to Phoenix. It's right on the edge of the Salt River floodplain. So it's, it's right adjacent to prime farmland, essentially. And those farmlands would have been watered by canals that come off the uh, Salt River. Okay, so this is Park of Four Waters. It's just, um, it's right by um, Pueblo Grande. And the canals that came off of here would have fed um, the fields by La Villa, almost five miles away. And so here are the canals in blue highlighted. And so then we, we move on. Here, there's Pueblo Grande, and then you can see the airport. And then in the far distance there in that slide, beyond downtown is the location of La Villa. So the canals would have run along the floodplain or the edge of the floodplain and then fed the fields down on what, the floodplain. What's interesting about this area is that it's, the preservation is just stupendous. Um, it was gridded off in the 1880s to 1890s as part of, um, well, more or less the original or an expansion of the original Phoenix town site. And so, more or less since that time period, it has had roads, warehouses, houses over it. But lucky for us that when they built roads in the 1880s and 1890s, and then when they finally paved them, um, I'm not actually even sure when they, they actually paved them, but they laid the pavement, the asphalt, right on the surface. And so they didn't dig in like modern roads and that helped preserve what was buried below. And this is just a, a pit house that we found in that six foot swath when we excavated it. And um, I don't know if folks know what pit houses are. These are the walls, an entry coming out, and then it had, this one had three hars. And so we couldn't find, we couldn't excavate the back wall because that went outside of the, um, our little narrow right of way. But we gained an awful lot of information from that house. Here's a, a well-preserved house, as, as you can see. This came from, um, this was along Jackson Street. And again, here's the protrusion on the, on the outside. That's the entry. This would have been this trench here with post holes would have been where the walls were. And then it had a central hearth and then some roof support posts. And then you can see it had a little, a partially, partial vessel on the floor. These houses were built with, um, they were dug in, and then they would have been, they used a caliche plaster for the floors. And this one, had, was, as you can see, very well preserved. It, it burned down afterward. And if you look at the, the side wall here, you can, you can see how far, just at the very top of this cut, is where the disturbance from the, uh, the road was. So everything below that was intact. Here, here's a picture of a, of a large house. And, and this, this house is interesting because A, it's fairly early. It dated to about 600 AD. So it was one of the first um, houses at, at the site. And the site in general dated from, the, our earliest occupations were in the mid 500s, and then the site began to be abandoned in the 900s. And, but during, between those two dates, it was extremely dense in places. And this house um, had the thickest floors I think I've ever seen. It had caliche that was, um, it, it was probably I, three, four, five inches. Yeah, very thick. We, we actually tried to chip some off at one point and we had to use a pick to get through it. That's how hard it was. And this is an aerial photograph of a house cluster that we found. What, what we found in a number of locations was um, overbuilding. So once the people had settled in this area, they started building their houses on top of each other. So we also found some great artifacts. I mean, the preservation, again, was stupendous. This is a, a photo of a collapsed, well, two collapsed, um, jars that contained, we had corn, we had some amaranth in it, 
um, squash seeds. And if you, can, if you take a look here, these two long things, they're antler or um, leg bones from a, from a deer. And so this would have been somebody's um, food that they stored. And somehow the house, the house burned down. Um, we don't know how, but we do know it burned and preserving everything. And the, the vessel it just smashed right onto the floor when the roof came down onto it. This was an assemblage we found um, on 13th um, Avenue. And, and we have two axes, a knife, and a projectile point. The projectile point is, is just tiny, but it's right there, the little white, little white swash there. And, uh, and that's, that's the house, house's hearth, the, the little pit. So that would have been the fire pit. Again, this house burned. Um, and it was part of a, a long-term group that were living in this area. The earliest house that we had in this area dated to about 700, and the last dated to about in the 10 hundreds. And then I, I'd like to show you a couple of our, we found a lot of figurines. And um, this is just one that we, we got out. And it, it, I always, I'm just always impressed by the, the anthropomorph, the, the sort of the people you're digging, you know, to, for them to look back at you. And this is a, a sensor we found. So this would have been, um, had, had, it had holes, and, and so there would have been a fire in it and smoke coming out, um, out of those holes. Um, again, incredibly lifelike. Um, I can imagine, say a, a, say, a Catholic priest, you know, how they swing those sensors and the smoke's coming out, something, something akin to that happening here with that. But with that. if you'll notice, there's a, a gap. There's, there's somebody working down here, and then there are people working here. And there's a 50-meter stretch where we found nothing. Where, where we found nothing. And in fact, when we started the project, we started down at that end and the mechanical stripping, and we were seeing nothing. It was clean. We found a few pits and things like that. But we were worried. We had set up all this, closed down roads, and we're, oh no, there's nothing here. And then all of a sudden, once we had gotten to that, past that 50 meters, all of a sudden, boom, dense, dense houses. And it, and it really showed up when you looked at the dirt, the, the plaza was yellow. And then, then as you moved away from it, it was black from all the, the habitation refuse and all that, and then all the, the multiple structures. So here's what the final map looks like of, of La Villa today. Um, there'll be con additional work, I, I'm sure, as, as this area continues to be developed, but we have two plazas, the eastern and the, the western, and then dense habitation around those plazas, and then that habitation thins out as you move away from that. And so you can see how, how these long transects, um, how we got lucky with that, that they really began to show, they really allowed us to have cross sections through the site. And, and that that really provided the information that we needed to get at the site structure. Plus, of course, we were lucky that the preservation was so good that, those, that the roads that were laid out in the 1880s and 1890s fell in, in pretty good places. But um, sometimes you do need a little luck. <laughs>